Mike, just to start with, I might ask you for the, the latest injury update. What information do you have at the moment on, on Dan Sheehan in particular? Um, we still haven't got a, a confirmation on, on what it is. Um, I think he's still seeing the specialists. Obviously, he's being rehabbed back in, back in Dublin. So, um, you know, hopefully Andy will have a bit more of a, an outcome-based uh, answer tomorrow. But um, as we currently stand, he's, he's seeing specialists and, and, and getting the proper treatment accordingly, really. Would the injury be a concern timeline-wise around the World Cup? There was a report last night saying that it could be between six and eight weeks that he could miss the pool. Are are those timelines open or, or are they being considered? Yeah, like I say, he's still being diagnosed and stuff, so we'll have a much better clue or idea um, tomorrow, Thursday, in terms of uh, of where he's at and what his um, what his back to return dates are. Uh, like obviously he's a very very important player for the team if he was to be out for maybe the first couple of pool games is he a player that you would be willing to carry uh, with the squad if for example he was only able to play one or, or maybe even none of the pool games yeah I think what you get from, from Dan he's one of the best hookers in the world currently um, so he's going to be missed in, in, in whatever team he plays in but um, again you know we've got full full faith in, in, in Rob Herring and, and Ronan Callagher and Tom Stewart, obviously, that's uh, that's showing his face at the moment. So um, it gives these guys an opportunity to have a pop this weekend. And uh, again, depending on the diagnosis, we'll see how we go on the on the back end of it. But yeah, you know, he's a he's a world class rugby player. He's been fun, fundamental in terms of or instrumental in terms of how we play our game. Um, so you know, he'd be a big loss to anybody. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, Neil. Anne Marie. Hi Mike, how's it going? Good, um, a week out from the World Cup, this game against Samoa, what are you hoping to see from the players um, building on from that game against England? Um, I think we need to be a lot more, more clinical. Um, we need to we need to play our way. You know, we know exactly what's what's coming with Samoa. They're a big physical side. We need to make sure that we we're playing our game and uh, playing at a tempo that we can that we've trained for the past eight, nine weeks to, to play at. Um, so it's, um, it's making sure that the guys are in the right frame of mind. It's their final opportunity to sort of put a gauntlet down really for, for, for selection and stuff. And, um, you know, we, we, we want to go into to the World Cup on a massive high. So we really want to be able to take our game. We haven't performed particularly well in Italy or England. You know, we, we, we definitely felt a bit rusty and more clunky as they've put it. Um, so it's an opportunity for us now to to fix the, the fixables. One thing a lot of the players have said over the last few weeks is just how good the preparation has been. Do you feel like you're in the best possible place? Obviously, injuries to the likes of Dan Sheehan aside, are you in the best possible place you could be heading into the World Cup? Well, we'll we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> but no, it's been it's been incredible. Eight eight nine weeks. I mean, we started rugby from from day one, so. Um, the boys were chomping at the bit to get a game under their belt. Um, it obviously is very different to training and, and, and running and stuff. So um, there are a few sore bodies out there, but it's it's perfect for, for what we want building up to it. Cheers, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Ashling? Yeah. Hi, Mike. Ashling Hi. here from Off The Ball. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Just on Dan Sheehan again, have you a chance to speak to him? I know mentally it must be a very tough time for him at the minute. Yeah, again, he hasn't been in camp with us. You know, he's, um, he's since we've been over here. So we flew out straight away after the game on, on, on Sunday morning. So, um, you know, he stayed in Dublin. So I, we haven't been able to speak to him at all, no. So obviously Andy and the, the medics are doing, doing that side of it. So we've, we've got a, a team to prepare. So we're doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And how important do you feel it is to be able to strike the balance between being really switched on for the whole time we're at the World Cup and also being able to, to relax too? Um, yeah, it's massively important. I, th I think it's, it's enjoy the journey. I think the, the, the guys and the, the current environment Andy's created, yeah, the people he's got in, yeah, um, make it to be a, a fun environment, a hard working but fun environment. And there's a real good balance in terms of family time, in terms of team time. And um, you know, Andy's well aware of it that, you know, 10, 12, 16 weeks together does both its problems, but I think we've, we've balanced it really, really well in terms of getting that ability to get away and, and enjoy yourself as well as work hard. Thanks. Uh, and for, 
Sorry, Ashley, I just want to get through everyone on the list. Yeah, so no maybe problem. Come to you. Thank you. Gavin? My guy, how useful is it going through the match week out in France and readiness for the real thing? And, and does it feel a bit different than, than pre-season so far this week? Yeah, very much so. Again, you, 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 you know, we've, we've, we've cut the squads a little bit. So in terms of, of bodies that are used, um, you know, your first game of a season, you're always going to be sore. The boy's going to be, you know, coming back to training at different times, different mentalities and stuff. So um, it's hot. It is proper hot. And um, you know the ball's definitely a little bit slipperier. So in terms of in terms of that, your humidity at that sort of time of night as well when we're playing. So I think it's a great preparation. And and, and again, you know Simone's are, are big physical guys. They play some good stuff. So they've got some talented guys there. So it's um, you know for the games that are coming up, I think it's going to put us in good stead going into the World Cup for a final game. Thanks. Uh, and then get sorry. cheers. Sorry, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Yeah, in terms of getting that squad down to 33, obviously it's very tense for the players. How is it for the coaches? How tough has it been? Any strong uh, differences of opinion, perhaps, in some of those meetings? Big characters in there? Um, yeah, there's always good good conversations had, but that's what you want with a, with a group of good good players like that. Listen, I've been on the receiving end um, of it as well in, in, in my career, so it's, it's not pleasant at certain people, but you've got to make decisions, you know, somewhere along the line. But, you know, with the way... With the way the game's gone and your your HIAs and your yellow cards and all this sort of stuff, you know, any one of the guys that we release currently that have been with us for eight weeks, nine weeks, you know, we'll see them back. That's just the, the nature of the game at the moment. So um, they're still massively part of the game, um, the squad. But it's, uh, you know, we've got to make a decision somewhere along the line. Thanks, Kevin. Last couple of questions for Michael Corcoran, then Justin, please. Michael. Uh, thanks, Peter. Mike, um, it's good to see you. Can I? Uh, so this weekend is the the last game without Johnny Sexton through suspension. Um, can I ask you what you've made of the performance of the the out halves uh, who've played in the the two matches so far, and what you're expecting from them? Sort of what conversations you've had with them, and what you're expecting this weekend? Um, again, just just building on what they've what they've um, currently got to. Um, I think the authorities is something that that uh, you know. Um, Ross Springs, Jack's probably still um, learning and that authority but um, listen he's got a lot of good players around him and if he's able to just play his game like he did for those last six games for Munster at the back of the season um, you know he's, he's got a massive massive amount of talent there so um, it's him being him, Ross being Ross and um, you know hopefully we can we can keep building on him going into the into that World Cup and just a question about your opponent, Samoa. I mean, they used to be known as a, a sort of just purely a physical team over the years, but the, their game has developed and evolved. What kind of a challenge are you expecting from them on Saturday night? Yeah, they, they've got some proper X-Factor players. I know their head coach, I'll say Lala Mapasu, I played with him in London Irish. I know the way he loves to play the game and coach the game. So it's, um, you know, that big physical side. And if they get momentum or if we if we feed them, in terms of loose kicking or anything like that, they, they're very dangerous on the counter-attack. So it's making sure that we, we tighten things up and uh, we do what the right thing is to do in, in, in the game. Cheers, Matt. Thanks very much. Thanks. Final question for Justin there. Mike, just one from me. And it's uh, of the 33 places, how many do you feel are up for grabs still? Um, all 33. Um, no, um... I'm not sure. Again, anything can happen. You know, week in sports, especially rugby union, especially playing against a, a Samoan team like this. You, you know, anything can happen. So, um, you know, we're happy where we currently are. Um, so everybody's got an opportunity again to 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 put their hand up. Um, so we'll see how the week goes on the back of it.